What you guys got another video here for you in this one we're going to be taking a look at free options after Windows 7 support ends. Now if you have got Windows 7 and you want to know some information about what you can do then this video is for you. So first off Windows 7 support will end on January 14 2020. So that's not long before you're going to have a system that is vulnerable and not going to be having any more support from Microsoft themselves. They're not going to be sending out updates or anything like that. You're going to be vulnerable to loads of different things. So let's take a look at the first option, which is extended security updates option. Now, this is an option that Microsoft have offered uh, users and businesses. If you have specialized software or devices running on Windows 7 Pro, you can purchase the extended support through to January of 2023. This is basically going to allow you to uh, receive updates and other service packs if they offer them. Now the first year will cost you $50 per device, then the second year will cost you $100 per device, and then the third year will cost you $200 per device, that's per computer. Want to continue to use Windows 7 but you don't want to pay Microsoft for the extended support? Well, that's pretty simple. All you've got to do is just disconnect that computer from the internet and you'll be safe. You can use Windows 7 for as long as you like and uh, you will be safe. Now you can see here, this is the market share for Windows 10. It's got 47.65% of the current uh, market. Windows 7 still has 32 0.74 which is quite scary that means there's a lot of Windows 7 users out there on the market poor old Linux is down there with 1.4 percent of the market share which is a bit of a shame and uh, you can see here we've got other versions of Windows and Mac OS available there as well which are pretty low down on the pecking order Windows XP only has 2 percent of the market share now which is still more than Linux itself but you can see there's a Mac OS and also Windows 8 and other operating systems. So the Lifecycle Facts extended security updates, they have got a spreadsheet which you can have a look at. I'll put the link in the video description. You can read this, it tells you how it all works and how you can get extended support and all that sort of good stuff if that is the route you want to go down. They've got volume licensing programs there and they've got some other information on there which I'll leave in the video description for you. But again, if you do want to continue to use Windows 7 safely and uh, you don't want to spend any money, then just disconnect it from the internet. You won't be able to get internet access from that computer, but you will be safe to use it. You won't be getting infected and you won't get any sort of ransomware attacks or anything like that. If you do stay connected, you run the risk of uh, ransomware attacks and other vulnerabilities because it's never going to get any more updates or patched anymore. Now you may get the odd person that says it's a load of nonsense, it's just scaremongering, but you wouldn't go and drive your car continuously without giving it maintenance, i.e. changing the oil, changing the spark plugs, you know, inflating the tyres every now and again. Otherwise what's going to happen is the car's going to start to uh, deteriorate and have problems. So let's take a look at your second option, upgrade or replace. So now we're going to be taking a look at upgrading. You can upgrade to Windows 10. The option to upgrade to Windows 10 is still available. You still can do it from Windows 7 and it's free. Microsoft never disabled the activation or upgrade servers that they got. And uh, basically you just follow my videos and you'll be able to do that for free. No problem at all. Now the only other concern is, is the Windows 7 machine that you've got uh, compatible with Windows 10? Is it good enough to run Windows 10? And that's another thing you're going to have to check to make sure that the system is good enough to run it. So there's three parts to this. You need to check the Windows 10 system requirements to make sure the computer can actually run Windows 10 comfortably. And uh, Microsoft have always been known to be pretty low with their system requirements, but I can tell you as a PC tech that Windows 10 doesn't run on systems very well with very, very low specs. So make sure you've got enough specification there to run Windows 10 correctly. Now, another problem you may run into is certain types of software 
that you use on your Windows 7 machine may not work on Windows 10. And this can be a big problem, especially for companies that have got a number of computers that they use with their sort of proprietary software that they use on that computer might not be compatible with Windows 10 and uh, there might not be an upgrade path for that software that you're using. You may need to get new software or you may need to contact the software provider and get a new license key or an upgraded version of software which can be very expensive for businesses. Now another problem you may run into is the old hardware inside that computer. You may need to check to make sure that hardware is compatible with Windows 10. You may be able to still install Windows 10 but the hardware inside that computer may not be compatible with it, it might not work properly, might have intermittent issues, it might not work at all and uh, you're going to run into problems. There might not be no drivers for that hardware and of course it's going to be a massive big headache for you to try and sort some stuff out to get that working correctly once you've rolled the upgrade out from Windows 7. So check all that first before you go ahead and start to upgrade to Windows 10. Now of course you've got the option to replace the computer which means basically if you replace it with a Windows 10 system if you're a home user it's probably not going to be so much of a problem uh, but as a business if you've got proprietary software which will only work on Windows 7 then you're going to run into some other problems so you need to make sure that your software is compatible with Windows 10 otherwise you're going to have a heap of trouble again and of course it's the cost thing of replacing every computer to Windows 10. Eventually you're going to have to do it so the choice is yours. So let's take a look at our third option and that is to install Linux. Now Linux will work lovely on an old system there will be no problems at all and I've chosen the MX Linux. I think this is a really good choice for Windows 7 machines. It's pretty uh, easy to install. You just go to their website, choose which country you want to download the ISO image from. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to download as close to my country as possible and uh, that means I should get a pretty decent speeds to download. The size of the download is not that big. You can then get yourself uh, Etcher to create your bootable USB flash drive. It's pretty straightforward. Just download it and uh, run this program. I shall show you how to download and also create your bootable USB flash drive with your chosen uh, distro of your choice. Linux Mint is another good one you can use. So I'm going to create the bootable USB flash drive here and then once we've got this you'll be able to install it. I'll show you the install process. It's very simple. So just select your image which I'm going to select here and now we need to select our target which is going to be our USB flash drive so just select that click on the select target you can see it's recognized it here just click on the large disk and you should see a tick there now we can click on continue and now it will say just click on flash and that is it just continue here and it will go ahead and create that bootable USB flash drive for us and we can now start that process so I'll speed this process up it does take a bit of time to create a bootable USB flash drive. Now you can choose other flavors of Linux if you wish. I mean there's plenty of them out there. I'll leave the link in the video description so you can choose. Now you want to try to get as close to uh, a Windows based system and I think the Linux MX does that for you. So we're going to boot up to our USB flash drive. You will need to change the boot order on your system to boot to it and then once it's loaded up which I'm going to show you here. It should get us to the desktop and I'll show you the rest. So it's starting to load in now and it's going to run the CD and it's going to be in a live environment but we're going to then click on the install MX19 and again this is a quite a friendly community they will help you if you've got problems and I'll leave all the information and links in the video description for this distro if you're interested in it. Um, but you can see here this is what it's going to roughly look like here there should be a little pop-up here we can close this off and now we've got the installer here we can click on the installer and install that from there so let's just go ahead and click on this I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for Windows users because obviously 
people on Windows who haven't used Linux before may think it's very, very daunting and very difficult to use, but it's pretty easy once you uh, get to grips with it. So click on the change keyboard layout and you can choose your keyboard layout from here. And uh, you can see here we've got US English. And if you live in the UK, you might want to change that to the UK. Or if you live in another country, you can change that to whatever keyboard layout of your choice. So I'm going to quickly click on the plus sign here and get to the layout. And you can see there's a bunch of different languages here for your keyboard. So whatever country you live in, you can choose this here. I'm going to choose English UK, click add, and you can remove the other one if you wish. I'm just going to hit the recycle bin and click apply. Nothing too difficult there. So once that's saved its settings, we can then move on uh, to the installation process. Now again, there is going to be some sort of learning curve here with Linux. But again, if you want to uh, be using the same machine that you've got there and you don't want to be buying new machines, then Linux is a pretty good choice because it means you can continue to use that Windows 7 box there with a Linux install on it and it should fly. You can see here auto install using the entire disk or you can set up and modify the partitions yourself. If you're not familiar with Linux, you might want to stick with the most easiest one, which is auto install using the entire disk you've got the opportunity to encrypt the disk here and you can leave from some free space up if you wish. Click next and then move on to the next step. At this stage, it's gonna say, okay, to format, use the entire disk, click yes. And this will then start to erase all the disk and create all the partitions for you. So you don't have to do any of the hard work. It's gonna also freeze near the end to give you the chance to install Grub for Linux and Windows and change the location to install MBR or whatever you want to do there. So I'm just going to leave this as default. You can see now it has paused and this is where you can make your changes, but I'm going to leave it as default here and let it go ahead and install the grub for Linux and Windows and MBR here. Next up, you can give it a computer name. You can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call this Brightech here and of course, the computer domain name, you can put that in there. I'm just going to put Brightek in there for quickness. The uh, Samba server for MS networking. I'm going to leave that ticked because I've got some devices that I want this uh, PC to actually detect. And you can see already there's updates available, 132 new updates available. You can click on that and install those a little bit later on once you've got the installation done. So next up, we've got the uh, US which we've got here. I'm going to change this to United Kingdom, which is your localization and also time zones. You can change all this to whatever you like here, depending on what country you're in. I'm in Europe, so I'm going to click Europe here. And then we can go ahead and go to the next bit. As you can see, it's set to Amsterdam, but we need to do London. So I'm going to put that in there. And of course you can choose whatever you like for your area. And you can change the format as you can see here. And that's pretty much it. You've got some advanced settings here. If you want to do that, it's entirely up to you what you want to do, it's your install. And once you've got that done, you can click next. There is some useful information to help down the left hand side there, which is pretty useful uh, if you're not familiar with Linux at all. So it does help you a little bit. Now we need to give this the default user login name. I'm just going to call it new user because it's a test machine and give it the default user password. And you'll notice there's much more security forced upon you with a Linux install compared to Windows. And this can only be a good thing. So we need to confirm our user password and now we need to give the root administrator account a password. This needs to be a pretty strong password. So give it a decent password. I'm just gonna give it a short password here because this is just a test machine and a tutorial. So you can show passwords. You can even put the tick in here to auto login if you don't want to keep typing in that password. So I'm just going to put that in there for now. And you can save live desktop changes if you wish. Gives you a little pop-up bubble there to tell you exactly what that means and what it does. You can do whatever you like on your install. Click next and move on to the next stage. And there you go. It's just going to get all that ready for us, install the grub and finish off the installation process. Pretty painless, as you can see. Not as daunting as you might have thought. 
So we're just going to let this finish off the installation process and we can now automatically reboot the system when the installer is closed. So we're just going to click finish now and again we will now boot into our operating system. So it's going to close down and you can see it will start stopping all of these things for us and it will say system restarting, remove your disk or your USB flash drive in this case and press enter on the keyboard and the system will then boot up for the first time. So let's go ahead and do that. Now I'm on a virtual machine here but as you'll see the installation process will be the same apart from you'll be installing it on a computer. Okay we're now at the desktop and as you can see here this is what your new operating system will look like and it's not too dissimilar to Windows it looks pretty nice you've got a nice look and feel to this distro I do like it and Windows users might find it um, very easy to use it's got everything pre-installed here that you're going to need you've got your task manager here which is very similar to sort of Windows really it shows you all your processes and all the memory and also the CPU usage and all that good stuff you've got a bunch of other stuff preloaded inside here You've got your MX packages area here. Just need to put in our root password. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. There we go. And you can install and manage popular packages from here. And you've got a bunch of other stuff you can do from here. So if you want to, for instance, install Audacity or any other program here, you can just put the tick in and install. Let me just quickly show you. Very simple stuff. Click on install. It'll ask you to say Y for yes or no. I'm going to continue by putting Y and then click on enter. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And it will go ahead and pull that down and install it onto the system. Very simple and easy to do. And that's that program installed. And there's a bunch of stuff in here which you're probably going to want to look at. You've got your browsers here and a bunch of other areas which is like email, docs, and other things that you can use to install. So don't leave it to the last minute. You've got plenty of options available to you. I've given you three good options here. You can see we've got LibreOffice. We've got a bunch of other bits and pieces here you can do. Again, if you need a Microsoft Office, you can do that online and I'll show you that right now. You just need to set up your account and you can use this on your Linux based system and it will work perfectly fine. You've got all your Outlook, your Word, your Excel, all your other stuff that you might be using. And of course you can use it across all your devices. So let's just quickly recap on our free options that we had, which was extended security updates option for Microsoft, which is gonna cost you an absolute fortune, or you can just disconnect from the internet and still use Windows 7 safely without getting infected. The other option was upgrade or replace, which is upgrade your operating system to Windows 10, and you can still do that for free, or replace the computer altogether and that was your other option on the third option would be to install Linux and I chose MX Linux as an option but you can choose pretty much any Linux distro you want whether it be Mint or whether it be Peppermint or whether it be uh, Manjaro whatever you like but I think MX Linux is a pretty nice option for Windows users to make that leap of faith over and uh, that's going to be about it just remember not to leave it till the last minute because uh, you've got two days left before Microsoft cease support for Windows 7. Okay, anyway, I think this answers all your questions. Hope it's been useful. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos.